is episode 491. And before we begin with Code of Honor, which this episode is going to be about, let's review what we talked about last week, and that is rules of the game. Now, I'm not going to go over the details of it, but this is just a highlight to help you understand what we've been learning so far. And if you didn't listen to last week's, maybe this will give you some curiosity to bump back to last week's episode. So rules of the game. First thing is we have to realize that thoughts are things. And then thoughts are bi-directional. Thoughts are like magnets, meaning they attract similar and like thoughts. The mind follows directions, and that direction is basically your attention. Where attention goes, energy flows, and results show. The mind externalizes its instructions. So you're giving yourself instructions all the time, and it has to externalize it in your results. And the mind runs on representations. So it has symbols and images, and this is why you cannot not think of a thought because you have to have an image there. So those are the rules of the game. Now let's get into a code of honor. I, I'm a big, big fan and a believer of codes of honor. And there's the, uh, at the end of this one, we'll go over briefly the Bushido, the seven virtues of Bushido, which is the samurai, if you will. There's a code of the West. There's a medieval code for the knights. And when you look back in, in history, those that had a dedicated path in life and, and behaved with an integrity had a code of honor for them to check in with to make sure that they were living within integrity. And so this is why I think it's really, really important to go over this because many of us don't have a code of honor. We don't even know what it is. We don't even know how to go about developing it. So there's many, many ways of developing a code of honor, but I'm going to go through one of them right now. But have you ever wondered how you can develop a personal code of honor? I mean, have you ever even thought about a code of honor in itself? Um, but developing a personal code of honor is a significant thing to do for yourself. It's a, it's a reward. It helps you stay within integrity within yourself. And essentially what you're doing is you're putting in writing the philosophies and ideas that are your nature, that who you really are on the inside, not uh, what society wants you to be, but who you truly are. And a pers co personal code of honor allows you to commit to these philosophies because you believe in them. And when you commit to them, decisions are easy because when you're faced with a decision, you reflect back on your code of honor and you take action based on your code of honor. So how do you develop a code of honor? Well, the first step is to take a close look at your life. Whom do you believe yourself to be? This is probably the biggest question. We go, who am I? Well, ask yourself how a friend would respond if they were asked to describe you. That would be one thing, and perhaps even developing a code of honor is go to a few of your close friends a life partner, a significant other, and ask them to write down how they would describe you. Um, would someone say you're kind and compassionate? Would something say you're even-tempered? Would some say that you're a hothead? Would some say that you're empathetic? Would some say that you just don't care, right? So we want to be able to find out what, you know, who we are, who do we believe we are, and put down all these traits that your relatives and friends may have said to you on paper. So we want to pick out the key words like empathetic, caring, compassionate, uh, hot-tempered, smart aleck, whatever those things are. We just want to get a list of how we would describe ourselves or how other people would describe us. And the second step is to put thought into what you believe. This is really, really challenging sometimes. So Part of the way that I work with clients in helping them discover what they believe is I will ask a open-ended question. Money is blank. People are blank. Life is blank. And answer those questions. So you could say, ask yourself, people are. And whatever that is, that's a belief. Money is easy. Life is fun. Life is hard. Life is a pain. Whatever it is, that's your belief. That, those are your beliefs. So start coming up with a list of things about um, the environment is, government is, people are, the news is, whatever that is, just start making this list and start answering those to get your, th your thoughts on your beliefs down there. 
Um, ask yourself what your ethical beliefs are, right? If th this can be really challenging about ethical beliefs, you know, thou shalt not kill, but what if somebody's coming in to hurt your family? Does that still hold true? So I, I'm not saying, you know, to, to do one thing or the other, but just really, really consider what your ethical beliefs are. And those are the beliefs that shape your life by influencing your decision making, your ethical beliefs and your other beliefs. These beliefs provide the impetus on how you're going to take action and how you make decisions. Um, questioning why you believe them is not that important at this point. We just want to get down thoughts about your beliefs. And, and just ensure you write as many of your ethical beliefs as you can think of. I mean, this is just, just get it out on paper. So now you have what you would might call your characteristics, and now you have your beliefs, your ethical beliefs about yourself. And then the next step is to look at how you relate to people. And that could be is think about how you deal with family members, with friends, with workmates, and even strangers. Just think about how you interact with these individuals. I'm sure you interact with your family members different than friends or your significant others, and you probably inter you you, you interface with your coworkers different than strangers. So in addition to to look at how you relate to people, consider the various places where you live, work, and play. So if you're at the gym, uh, CrossFit box, regular gym, tennis, basketball, how do you relate to the people that you're involved in there? When you're at work, how do you relate to the people there? When you're out at a restaurant, a movie theater, a concert, how do you relate to the people there? So start thinking about how you relate to people in different environments. And is there anything related to honor that has a negative impact on how you relate with these people. List the changes you would like to make. So if you are cold and standoffish, write that down and then go, I'd like to change it to something else. So you want to look at how you relate to pe people. This list should involve things as obvious as arguing with family to things as little of importance such as gossip. You know, if you're around the water cooler, the proverbial water cooler at work and you find yourself gossiping take a look at that that's how you relate to people and is that something that you want to change now the next step is where you question why you believe in what you believe this can be really significant so this whole code of honor thing can take you up to a week to a month because we want to really sit with this energy and let and let things percolate up in our minds so that we can address these as best as possible. Um, this is an essential step determining why you believe what you believe as it helps you establish how important each of your beliefs is important to you. It's not if it's right or wrong, but why do you believe what you believe? Why do you believe money is hard to make? Why do you believe life is fun? Why do you believe that? And you start looking back perhaps on past experiences, perhaps how your family has raised you, perhaps how school is written has raised you. You want to make sure that you are believing it because of you, not because somebody else. And the source of most beliefs is religious or spiritual, whether you know that or not, whether you go to church or not, whatever it is. But these beliefs are handed down from generations to generations. So one of the things here is, is this a belief that you have actually thought of? Or is it, yeah, my mom believes this, my dad, my uncle, my, my society, my country, my heritage, that's all things that they believe. So then you want to question is, is this really a true belief that I have or I have I been programmed with this belief? And this is really, really important because if you believe something because it's been programmed into you, is that belief supporting you in living a very happy, prosperous, abundant, joyful life? Or is that belief preventing you? And that belief can become with other ethnic races, how you, how you deal with other ethnic races, other genders, other, other individuals, right? So how you in, interact with other people, the list before, is, will be an indication of what you believe about that. So we want to make sure that we get these beliefs nailed down and why you believe them. And then next to each belief, list the verse or t teachings 
that each of your beliefs is based on. So again, it could be my mom thought that uh, people were, were always good, and I look for that. Um, money is hard because we always struggled, and my dad had to get two jobs, so I think money is hard. So you want to put down where those beliefs are based from. And at this point, you know who you are, your beliefs, and the reason behind your beliefs. Now, with all this information, you now can develop your personal code of honor. Um, this last step is not as hard as it might sound. However, it will take you time as you have to decide what is important enough to include in your code of honor and what is not important enough to include. So you have this big list, these three lists, and you want to um, assemble these lists into a structure where if you lived by them, you would be living a happy, fulfilled, dedicated life. And there's basically three parts what you want to consider. The first section is your purpose. Why? Why are you writing this code of honor down? Why do you have this? Why are you going through all this? Why, why, why? And, and this could also be your purpose in life. What is your purpose in life? But understanding why are you taking the time to develop this code of honor? Why is that important to you? The second step is the I will section. I will treat people with respect. I will uh, treat money with respect. I will, um, oh, I will be a gentleman. I will be a, a lady. Whatever that might be. What, I'm just giving out, obviously, some short verbiage. But this next section is I will. So you write out why you're doing it. I'm creating a coat of cone of honor so I can have a structure to live by in an ethical manner that is true to my soul and my teachings in life. Something to that nature. And the second session section is I will and behave in accordance with my belief, my empowering beliefs, which are, and you could write, write those down. But the second set section we want to talk about is the I will section. The third section includes the reason for your beliefs and the rules you would like to follow when dealing with other people. So again, this is why we want to um, really define what beliefs empower us and the reasons for these beliefs. I believe money is easy because I see abundance throughout the whole world. Um, I believe that people deserve respect and I'm going to treat them this way. So these are the three parts that you have on um, this code of honor. Um, one of the things, if you go to where this podcast is hosted, warriormindcoach.com, use the pull-down menu, go to the blog. I have the seven virtues of Bushido listed there. Now, it doesn't take this format because back then it was more just a list of what these virtues are and what you were going to do with them. But for me, this is a really powerful example of a profound code of honor. Um, you can get it there or do a search for Seven Virtues of Bushido and see how that resonates with you and use some of that, that verbiage and that intensity, if you will, to start to create your own. So I hope you enjoyed this one on developing your code of honor, and I actually hope you start taking action on it. Uh, the next time, I haven't decided what we're going to discuss, and if you want to provide some input, that would be wonderful. Um, and again, you can see the show notes on this and the seven virtues of Bushido by visiting warriormindcoach.com. And please, please follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest with the username 